Hi, all. Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'm going to look at using mid-journey backgrounds with uh, some Venice Carnival images. Bobby and I lead a photo tour to Venice for Carnival every year. We set up private shoots with some of the best customers, and sometimes it's hard to secure a good location. It is also very expensive to rent a palace for an interior shot. So I thought we could look at using Midjourney to generate some Venetian backgrounds. Let's take a look here. Okay, so here's a, uh, here's a, a Midjourney generated background and uh, it's using the, um, the text prompt, Venetian palace interior, orange and teal colors. So uh, we composite our customers into this and we have this. This one's pretty, an easy one because we don't see their feet. Uh, so we can just place them right over the background. Uh, here's another one uh, uh, where the prompt is under the portico of the Doge's Palace in Venice. And this is Mid Journey's version of that. Uh, the actual portico doesn't have the second set of, of, uh, of columns. I mean, these, these columns here, we don't have those. And here's our costumer uh, <laughs> covering up the, the columns that shouldn't be there. Again, an, a fairly easy one because there's, you don't see her feet. Here's another one, uh, foggy uh, morning under the portico of the Doge's Palace in Venice and with a foggy morning uh, as an additional text prompt. And here's our customer. And uh, this is again, fairly easy because the lighting is, is, is very soft. Uh, so our drop shadows are very soft. Here's another background uh, on the steps of an exotic Burma temple. Uh, and I thought this would work well for these costumes and uh, we're placing them on the steps there. Here's another Venetian palace interior. Again, the text prompt, uh, Venetian palace interior, orange and teal colors. And here's our costumer, pop him right in there. You'll notice that uh, I put the reflections underneath uh, him to kind of um, make him stand on that surface. If we can tell that it's kind of a polished surface. So it needed to have some sense of reflection there. And here's, I think, my favorite one, um, an ornate Venetian palace interior with high arcing windows, gold color with blue accents, sun streaming in from the windows. And I like this one because I was able to use a backlit uh, costumers here. Uh, and it really fits into the scene because of the direction of the light. It's very convincing. Again, notice the reflections placed in the marble floor. And here's another one. This one uh, is all together. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to look at creating something similar to this uh, a little bit later. But one of the interesting things here is the, the shadow from the figure. The figure has been composited in, but the shadow from the figure helps to really sell this as a, a, a finished image. All right, so let's take a look at this and uh, go into Photoshop here. First, here's our a collection of costumers and what they were photographed. Uh, we're going to look at, at this one first. And uh, so we'll do a uh, photo, edit in. And instead of going up here, edit in Photoshop, I'm going to go down here and open as a smart object in Photoshop. So here, here we have our subject um, in Photoshop, ready for the composite. And um, we need to make a mask. So fortunately, with the new AI select tools, we're going to go into the select menu and just select subject. And we've got a really good selection. There's only one thing that I need to fix. Um, and whenever I make a selection like this, I'll make sure that I have a, a selection tool selected. Any selection tool will do because then we can see the select and mask 
If you don't see that, you don't have a selection tool uh, in the, selected in the toolbar. So let's do that. And I want to double check my selection. I'm always going to go in to the Select and Mask dialog just to check it out. So here uh, I've got my mask color as, as this green. And uh, we can see that part of her, her headdress here is, is it's, it's not showing through to the background. So I'm going to want to edit that. So we'll zoom in here. And over here are our mask editing tools. This brush is the, uh, is the direct mask editing brush. So I'm going to use that first. And uh, we'll subtract from the selection, which is the, the subject is being selected. If I hold down the option now, my, my brush, my, the option or alt key, the brush will turn into uh, a, a, a subtract selection tool. So it's in essence, we're creating the mask. Now I'm going to go in here. I want to fill in this area because this is actually part of the background. I don't have to be super accurate. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I tell Photoshop this area back here really should be considered the background. So I don't have to get super detailed here. I'll fill this out in a, in a minute. I just want to also subtract I'm not again I'm not being all that careful but I do want to indicate to Photoshop that these areas really need to be considered as background so I'm going to go ahead and subtract out these areas again I'm holding down the alt or option key um, to do that and the key here is I just get it close but not perfect um, I mean, after all, that's what the what the AI is for. It's going to figure out this mask in a minute. Let me just increase my brush size, and we'll finish this off. Okay, so now I I'm I I'm pretty clearly I've got that that uh, the background is all covered up with a green. Okay, so here's the the trick. Uh, to get Photoshop to really finish off this mask properly, I'm going to increase the radius for edge detection. And usually I go to about 10, uh, and you can kind of see it's it's doing a pretty good job there. Let's, let's amp it up just a little bit, go to 15. And now this will automatically smooth and feather edges, and uh, it does a really good job. Uh, we can just check to make sure that our edges look pretty good, and they do. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that thing. It looks a little bit like a shadow side of the hat, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, and then we're gonna output. We use the output settings here to output to a selection. So we say okay. And now one of the reasons that I open as a smart object rather than just opening it up um, is that uh, now when I make a mask here, I am making the mask for the smart object. And you'll see when we when we put this into our composite image, if I have to rescale it, it's, it's going to go back and use uh, the raw file. It goes back to the original raw file and calculates the new size directly from all the raw data, which is uh, desirable. And uh, the other benefit is that uh, because it's a smart object, Lightroom is waiting to see what I do in Photoshop before it creates it's not going to create another file. I have to create the file in Photoshop. And I don't like to generate extra files every time I open them up in Photoshop. So always open as a smart object. OK, so our trick here is I'm going to get my Move tool. And I'm going to just drag it over. This is the tab that has the background in it. Here's my subject again. I'm going to click and drag up to that tab, wait till it comes forward, and then drag down, and there's my subject. And it's now in this background. Let me just find a kind of nice spot for it. We'll put them more or less in the center. Now, in order to really make this work, I'm going to do a little bit of editing to the background. I want them to stand out. Their colors are very similar, uh, and I, I just need that background to uh, you know, just kind of fade into the background a little bit. So um, we will uh, we'll do a little 
we'll desaturate a little bit. So I'll, I'll put uh, a hue saturation adjustment in there and just sort of desaturate that background a little bit and maybe make it just a little bit darker. Just have it feel a little bit more like a, the room's behind them a bit more. Okay, so there we have that one. Okay, here's uh, the other portico. Let's let's grab our our subject, and we'll find that over here. So again, I'm going to go edit in, open as a smart object, and here we are. Let's go ahead do our little select subject thing. And again, always check the select and mask. I can see that I have some issues up there around this feather. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll just we'll just do the radius here, and that will kind of feather our edges a bit. And I think that's probably good. We'll go to our output to our selection. Okay, and we're ready to bring this into the other background. Um, I'm going to move that over so that the tab is close to that other one. Looking under the portico, there we go. Let's, let's uh, make our mask. I'll click on that mask icon there, and now I've got it masked off. And we're ready to drag that into the new background. Okay, now we're going to res rescale this to make it fit. So go to free transform here. That's uh, under, <laughs> that's command T. That's uh, under the edit menu, uh, free transform. And we'll just scale that down. I'm going to get it to fit just a little bit. I think that's pretty comfortable. Yeah, like that. Now we can kind of get away with this. Uh, however, I want I want to sell this as uh, flash on camera is illuminating the subject, but it's not carrying into the background. Uh, we do this a lot when we're in Venice, uh, so it's uh, sort of dragging the shutter uses slower than slower than your sync speed to bring in the background uh, ambient light. But the subject without the flash would be kind of a silhouette here because all the light's coming from, from behind the subject. The subject's under the portico and is not getting any light. So flash on camera is illuminating the subject. I'm going to add a little uh, sort of gradient feather down here to create a shadow effect to make her look like um, the flash was a grid spot. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add a curve layer here. And um, I'm going to clip the curve to the underlying layer. So we form a clipping group by clicking on this little icon down here. And now when I reduce the the illumination here, I'm just bringing that curve down. I'm going to bring it down uh, maybe like that. And I'm going to add a layer mask here using a gradient. We'll get black in the foreground and we're going to go black to transparent here in the gradient. And uh, I'm going to hide the curve from the upper part of the figure. And we'll stop right about there. So that little bit, that little bit of, of kind of darkening, sort of vignetting the bottom of just the figure helps to sell it like it's in the, uh, in the scene. All right, let's go back here. Let's, uh, let's, let's work on this one. So we will edit in, smart object. 
Okay, this one should select very easily, so we're going to go select uh, subject. And there we go. Again, just double check, select and mask. Let's zoom in here. I, I can see right now that we have we have all these issues. So um, I'm going to use my little trick here to tell Photoshop that it should be looking at this all this lavender wall as the background. So we're going to subtract those things. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me. You know, just take little things like that out. Again, each time I brush, I have to go back in here and redo that radius to make it recalculate the edge. So we'll leave it, we'll leave it like that. I think that's pretty good. Again, checking everything else. Everything looking pretty good. All right. Out to selection. Make my layer mask. And now let's find the background. Just under the pork, I'm going to move this tab over so it's close to the other tab. And move tool, and let's drag it over. Okay, now this one needs to be re resized quite a bit. Another reason why I like to use that smart object, because if I guess wrong and I try to resize it ahead of time and output it that way, um, if I've made it too small and I want to scale it up, then I'm losing quality. This way, I'm always scaling from that smart object. So let's go ahead, do our um, do our free transform, which is Command or Control T, by the way, and I'll just resize that. Now here we got to figure out what is a good size. And I also, I'm going to want to flip her because I want to put her arm over this column. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get her size down about like that. I don't know, you know. There's no point of reference. I can see the doors. She's got to be a bit smaller than the doors, so maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, flip her. We'll do the transform. Flip horizontal. And we'll move her into position. I want to have that hand right over that column. So like she's standing really close to the column. Okay, now it may seem like we're done, but we're not. Because we have to put little drop shadows in here to make this, to get her to, to actually touch both the floor and this column. So that means I got to get a layer in between these two. This is going to be my drop shadow layer. And uh, we'll change the blend mode to uh, multiply. And I'm going to just brush in. There's, there's two things we need to be concerned with. There's the contact shadow. So I'm going to make a brush that's as soft as possible. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to brush around the bottom of her hem, just barely there, a very dark drop shadow. Okay, so that's, that's our, we'll, we'll rename that contact shadow because this is the one that's literally touching the floor. Now we'll do another layer. This is going to be just a soft shadow. 
and uh, we're going to put a soft shadow underneath the flower and the hand here. So, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use normal brush mode, but I want to change my opacity. I'm gonna bring the opacity down to uh, like I don't know 25, 26 percent there, so that I can brush multiple times. And again, I'm just going to kind of create a very soft, sort of progressively softer shadow here. And maybe that's too uh, too dark. Let's let's lighten that up just a little bit. Okay, some uh, no something like that. So now you can see it really starts to look like she's touching it, and maybe a, a, a contact shadow. The hand is, is really touching the wall, so let's make that really small there. I'll bring back my full opacity. And um, again, just gonna be sort of a contact shadow in that area. And now I have to, I have to create a little bit of a, more of a shadow. You can kind of see it's not even so much a shadow that I'm looking for, but you can kind of see the the darker reflection in this polished uh, pavement here of the column. I need something similar for her. So I'm going to go back to my soft shadow. Uh, we'll go back to our, we'll do like, you know, 15% or something like that. Now, bigger, softer brush. And I'm just going to, kind of darken this area in front of her gradually. Just a little bit to make it look like she's actually in the scene. And these are very important little, uh, little things that you need to do. The other thing that I need to do is she seems like she's too contrasting now compared to this background. So let's Let's put another curve and we'll, we'll lock that curve onto her so that it only affects the figure by clicking on my little clipping group uh, icon here. And let's, uh, we'll, we'll raise the black point. This will soften the contrast. And we'll turn it on off just to check. Yeah, I think that, that that probably does it. Okay, now let's do one more. All right, so I told you uh, about this one. We're gonna we're gonna mask drop this one in a new background. But one of the one of the issues here for this image is there's a very strong uh, cast shadow from the light source that is visible is invisible. It's out of the frame. Uh, there's a lamp pole over here that's casting a, a sort of a, a side light onto the figure. I am filling her with a flash. So, um, but there's the indication that there's a side light. You can see this lit side and the long cast shadow. So we're going to have to think about how that's going to fit into an, an, another background. Let's go ahead and. Uh, we'll do our edit in and bring that smart object into Photoshop again. And we'll go ahead and do our select subject. Again, get into that selected mask just to make sure. Uh, I know the area, the thing of, that I'm really interested in is how this feather masks out. Uh, let's just try bringing our edge detection way up. Okay, not 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 horrible. We'll we'll uh, I'll let that go. Um, sometimes if you put smart radius on, it will sharpen up the edges that shouldn't be uh, too soft. Um, okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I think that's good enough. Okay, so this is the background I'm going to go into. Now, I generated this background. This is a very similar uh, mid-journey prompt, only I'm including the figure of a woman. It did this weird thing with this 
it made the woman kind of a, I said ornate costume in it. You know, it's it's kind of bizarre actually. You never know. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes Mid Journey just has has just hallucinates in a weird way. Anyway, the room is great, but the reason I put a figure in there is that I can place another figure on top of this and take advantage of the fact that they've already got a really nice um, drop shadow, cast shadow here, uh, that's going to help me sell this uh, as part of um, part of the environment. Got to create the mask, and now I'm going to drag her in, and I want to cover up this other figure. So I can't quite cover her up. Almost. I got a nice that feathers displayed against that dark band. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, but I need to remove this figure. So fortunately, Photoshop has uh, the generative fill, which we can use. I'm going to go ahead and just lasso this a little closer to the figure. So that's going to give Photoshop a better idea of like the room behind the figure. If I if I select too much, it'll have to replace too much. So I just wanted to replace this figure. So we just click on generative fill. And no prompt, I just wanted to look at the background and replace what's there. Okay, wow. I think the first one nailed it. <laughs> Let's check the others. Yeah, I, I kind of like that one better. But now let's let's check with our figure in place. I hardly see it, but it is covering up the areas where we saw the other figure. So it kind of doesn't matter. Um, and now you can kind of see it really matches the lighting. The light's coming in here and hitting her and, and causing this cast shadow to go off to the side. Um, so there you have it. There's a couple of different strategies for developing a background that you can place a, a costumer into. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own work. And perhaps you'll start investigating AI image rendering on your own. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I hope you can join us in uh, Venice for Venice Carnival 2025 next year. See you there. Bye-bye.